Today with Joseph Prince. When Jesus comes again, immediately, you won't see it happen. Neither can I see it happen. Poof, we have a brand new body. And all trace of sickness, deformity or whatever, all gone. The same person that bore the most sins in the entire history of man. There never was a person that bore more sins. There never was a person who can bear sins, lah, by the way. But if you talk about every filth, every uncleanness, the person that bore all these sins in his own body, amen, on the cross is Jesus Christ. The fact that he can, right now in his resurrection, walk into heaven by his blood, and the Father glorifies him, the Father says, sit on my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. That means what? Where are all the sins? Where are all the sins that he bore a few days ago? Where are all the sins? Whose sins are those sins? Whose sins are those? Whose sins are those sins? Come on. Hey, talk to me, people. Come on. <laughs> talk to me. Come on. Wh whose sins are those that he bore? So, but wh wh where is it now? He, when he stepped into the Father's right hand and the Father says, You are my son. This day have I begotten thee. Sit on my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. You are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Having purged our sins, he sat down. Purge means cleanse. Are our sins cleansed. Yes. You know how we know? Jesus seated at the Father's right hand. Amen. 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 So what the devil wants to do is that the devil wants you to look at you on earth below, in the flesh. And he knows he has every, he has every reason to point you to that because, man, every day we thought we are improving. You know, spiritual growth is not... It's not uh, by your efforts, you know, oh, no more bad thoughts, no more bad words, no more bad temper, no more overeating. <laughs> Singaporeans, no more overeating. No more glutton's corner. <laughs> Gluttony is sin, by the way. Okay, I, I won't stay there. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll be merciful, let you off on that. It just goes to show that a lot of people choose sin when they want to, you know, condemn others. They choose what they want to condemn, right? Some things are, <gasps> how terrible they do, but then they are guilty of gluttony. <laughs> Amen? Shall I go on? Okay. <laughs> so all sins are born plus gluttony by Christ. Amen? Amen? Now, Pastor, you didn't address the issue about, about we got to deal with sin. Let me listen to me first. This is the best way to deal with sin. It's the deeper way to deal with sin. All right? But before I come to that, let me finish. Do you, do you understand that? Where is Jesus today? At the Father's right hand. Just imagine that. Just before He sat down at the Father's right hand, just a few days ago, just a few days ago, He was carrying our sins. Hmm? On that cross? Today, where are the sins? Gone. And that's why he can go in. Listen, you must have the same mentality. Where there's remission or forgiveness of sins, where sins are put aside by, the, by his blood, we must have boldness to enter the holiest. Amen. Actually, listen carefully, it is not so much, uh, it is writing to the Hebrews telling them, come near. For us, we are already near. That's why we are called the body of Christ. You know where's the body of Christ today? At the Father's right hand, the right center of the universe. We are the body of Christ. We're the many-membered body of Christ. It's like, to, to, to you, it's like, uh, this sounds so uh, metaphorical and so uh, out there and all that. With God, it is the reality. Your experiences every day is more like metaphorical and all that. Oh, wow. This is the reality. Amen. You see, if God ever, if the, the blood of Jesus has been sprinkled at the Father's right hand just now, I said that, right? The Bible says Jesus went in with his own blood, not with the blood of bulls and goats like they did in the Old Testament. That's why they got reapplied the blood, reapplied the blood, reapplied the blood because their work is never finished. It's not sufficient. The blood of bulls and goats cannot wash away sins. But he went in once with his own blood, having obtained eternal redemption. Do you see the word eternal? Redemption for us, okay? Is the blood still there? Then you have been perfected and perfected without ceasing. Is the blood there? Then you are made righteous and you are righteous in God's eyes without ceasing. 
When I heard Pastor Prince talk about grace, I knew that that was a simple thing that we should all know, but I had never heard it in that way, that we were the righteousness of Christ Jesus. Days weren't dark anymore. The depression was lifted, and my life has been completely different, and I can see the effects in my family. It is like 120% better. Bringing the old with the new, and it's all refreshing, and it's all very necessary for today. If the gospel of grace has impacted your life, I would like to invite you to join us as a grace legacy builder. Let's advance the gospel of grace together. Visit the link on your screen to be part of leaving a legacy of grace today. If ever you can remove the blood, and God's eye is on the blood, it's not on man. Listen carefully. God's eye is not on man's sin. I'm talking about believers, okay? Not on your sin. God's eye is on the blood. If ever, if ever, which is not possible, okay? If ever God takes His eyes off the blood to look at your sin, God has just um, negate, slighted the blood of Jesus. God cannot do that. And that's what the Bible says, blessed is the man to whom the Lord shall not impute sin. Why? Because it has been imputed at the cross. That's why the Bible says the new covenant is all based on this clause. And the Holy Spirit has been sent in Hebrews 10, it tells us, to be a witness to us. And hardly, we hardly hear this witness. And the witness is, your sins and your lawless deeds are remember no more. No more or any longer. Your sins and lawless deeds are remember no longer or any more. That means there was a time in the Old Testament God remembered man's sins because he was under the law. If it's based on your responsibility, we are finished. God remembers our sins. But it's based on Jesus and what he did, God remembers our sins no more. Right? No more means there was a time he remembered our sins. Where? At the cross. He remembered to punish our sins in the body of Jesus Christ. If that isn't love, tell me what is. So today when God, when a sinful man cries out, all right, for Jesus to be his Lord and Savior, God welcomes him, listen, not by mercy. The Bible says God's, all his, his holy and uh, perfect attributes, that only a God has, have all been glorified by Him accepting that sinner. That's why the Bible says God is righteous in making the sinner righteous. Why? Because the blood has been shed and the blood of Jesus Christ fully met all of God's holy claims of righteousness and holiness from us. The blood has met it. Are you with me so far? So today, the challenge is we, instead of identifying the second Adam, the, the new federal head of the human race, as he is, so are we in this world. And that's why we have testimonies of the testimonies of people. Once they hear, like I've, I've thought before, as he is, so am I in this world. That, does Jesus have this disease? Does Jesus have that disease now? No. So as he is, so am I in this world. Now, you see that in the natural, I, I, I see it on the x-ray, I see it on the CT scan. Uh, in, in the natural, I, I, the blood work shows that. But in that, all that's flesh, all that's physical. For us, physical is real. Spirit world is not real. But God is a spirit world that brought, it was the spirit, God's the spirit, that brought forth the material. And the, if you can see something, the Bible says it's temporal. It's true. This chair you sit on, Come back 50 years. It's not the same shape anymore. One day it shall be no more. Amen. You can see it. It's, it's temporal. The things which cannot be seen are eternal. Who you are in Christ. Now this body, right? This flesh. Thank God it is temporal. When Jesus comes again, immediately, you won't see it happen. Neither can I see it happen. Poof, we have a brand new body. And all trace of sickness, deformity, or whatever, all gone. Yes, amen. We'll all forevermore look like Pastor Lawrence. <laughs> Almost. No, Pastor Lawrence will be glad when he gets a new body. Amen. Amen. For now, for now I will stand it. I was. Every week he gets attention, no? I will stand it so low, we can only aim for. Pastor Lawrence. <laughs> Our glorified body will be amazing. Amen. 
Amen? So we identify with the Lord Jesus. Now, the only part right now as we identify is all faith. That's why the Bible says faith. We say, oh, faith is not real. and all that. No, faith is more real than physical stuff. Amen. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. Even right now, scientifically, there are a lot of material things that has been proven, came from gases or nebulous things uh, in the air and, you know, those things you cannot even see with your eyes. You can't even see with your eyes. If you just go by your eyes, hey, I, I can't see it, I won't believe it. Man, you are limited. And primitive. Because we don't think that way anymore. A lot of things are unseen. All right? Beyond that, there's a real world. Spirit world. So as far as God's concerned, God looks at you, He sees you without sin. Listen carefully. I think as far as God's eyes are concerned, that doesn't mean that you don't experience sin today, this side of heaven, as a Christian. You, there's no, let me put it this way. When God looks at you, there's no sin on you because His eyes on the blood. When God looks at you today, amen, that, by the way, if we say there's no sin in us, we lie. There's still sin in us, but it will never be imputed against you. Now watch this, watch this. The, the part of you that likes to sin has been finished at the cross. This is where faith must come in. The moment you start, the Bible says, reckon yourself dead. That part of you that likes to sin, reckon it dead. It's finished. It's finished at the cross. Knowing this, Romans 6, 6, our old man was crucified with Christ on the cross. It's finished. I have not forgotten Genesis 26 <laughs> and the famine. The reason I want to whet your appetite is because a lot of Christians know about Russia and uh, Ezekiel 38, about the war. Russia will come down. I want to say towards the end, just a little bit about it. And then we'll continue this, huh? <laughs> Next few weeks, what do you think? Yeah, this is whetting your appetite, okay? And, and to, to, more good things to come. Yeah. Well, we'll take our time. We're not going to rush through. God is preparing His people for that famine. Okay? But He wants us to be established in the truths that are vital for us to abide in. Amen. So watch this, watch this. All right? That part of you that love to sin, that's still uprising right now after you become a Christian. Have you noticed? Even after you become a care group leader, even after you become a deacon, sometimes you feel like a demon. <laughs> you ever say, how can, I, how can I think these kind of thoughts? Perhaps even after you become a pastor. Very bad, no, Pastor Lawrence. On top of your good looks, you say amen, you know? This kind of thing, you don't say amen so loud. Say. Amen. Yeah. So. That part of you, that, that keep on rising up, you know what God says to you? It's dead. But God is all alive. I feel it. It's dead. I say, I can't, God, how can you say it's dead? I, I feel it. I had those thoughts. God said, as far as I'm concerned, it is dead. In the eyes of God, it's finished at the cross. Now you take that position. In other words, listen, whenever it rises up, I'll just say it's dead. To my feelings, it's real. To faith, it's gone. But if you make provisions against it, even praying against it, uh, you know, it's your pastor praying. praying is good. Listen carefully. If you, your prayer is based on unbelief instead of revelation, it negates the revelation. There's a time, like, like, like uh, Moses in front of the Red Sea, he prayed. God says, why are you crying to me? Why are you praying? Why are you lifting your voice to me? Tell the people to go forward. There's a time to pray and there's a time to use your authority. There's a time to declare. You know, you don't pray for something that has already been accomplished. You don't pray to defeat an enemy that has been defeated. Yes. Your prayer becomes what? It becomes unintelligent. Amen. The Holy Spirit is the pure truth. He cannot bear witness to a lying prayer. You might not be intentionally lying, right? But you are lying because it's not based on God's truth. If you act like you're still in the flesh, you get results that's not 
Godly. Why? Good results. Why? Because you are, you are negating the Word of God. More, more seriously, you're negating the work of Christ. Because that man is dead. The bad thoughts you had towards me just now, gone. <laughs> Amen. So your response what? It's gone. No, this is not me. It acts like it's alive. It's dead. It's dead. It's the same feeling you get when you, you, know, you take a, a, a cruise you know, to nowhere, whatever, uh, for seven hours or you know, one whole day until at night. You step onto the, the jetty, right, of the boat. I reckon after nearly an hour, you still feel yourself going up and down. Even though you're on solid land. It is not the real thing. You are no more in the boat. You're no more in the flesh. Feelings, these feelings are a lie. And the worst is that you start praying, no, 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 these things are coming up. I don't want to sin. I, I rebuke. I, the more you act like it's a life, you are acting in unbelief. Therefore, you fall. So actually, even the part of you that love to sin is gone. Doesn't it help you? When, you? when you take communion, you have bad thoughts, whatever, just right, ah, it's gone. It's not, it's not the real me. Oh man, the devil wants you to say, no, no, say, it's my thoughts. You can't stop. Sometimes it's the devil. You know, it's not just your flesh. The devil can, you can't stop birds from flying over your head. They can stop them from what? Building a nest. <laughs> hey, Pastor Prince, uh, yeah, can you pray for me? Uh? Why? This bird came and landed on my head, you know, <laughs> about, about three weeks ago. Wow, really? Uh? I thought you were wearing a special kind of hat. No, no, it's, it's, the, it's a nest. And now I think I'm uh, laying two eggs ready. So what, what prayer you want? Uh, can you pray that the bird will go away? No? In the first place, you can't stop birds from flying over your head, but you can stop them from building a nest. Right? What does that mean? You can't stop thoughts from flying, be it from your flesh or be it from your, uh, the enemy, the powers of darkness but you don't have to entertain them. But some of us, we are shocked by even the thoughts. While we are praying, we get a blasphemous thought, a profane thought. It's not you. It's not you. The devil says, no, it's you. It's not you. You are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Identify with the real you that God identifies with. So when Jesus, who is representing you and I, always remember that, at the cross, He's there as you and me, okay? To substitute for us. It's like He's there for us, okay? Got it? So when God raised Him from the dead, God raised Him as if He's us, right? We have been crucified at the cross with Him. Remember that? Because when, when He died, He died as us. Just like the first Adam was representing as us. Whatever accomplishments of fall becomes our share. So now, Jesus is now in the Holy of Holies, the holiest, at the Father's right hand. Where are you and I? Same place. So listen, there's no such thing as an absentee worshiper. When it comes to worship, we are always there already. Actually, we are already in the Holy of Holies. This is something that even Aaron, the first high priest of Israel, never had this privilege. He only enters in on Day of Atonement once a year. He only gets into the Holy of Holies once a year. And for us, we are perpetually there. Amen. And the Bible says today, I, I, you might say, well, you know, I, I, I hear a lot of things about those who go into the Holy of Holies, if they have sinned, they're not prepared, not that. that shows our mentality is so much, and, but, and we finish off, and they die. They die because they sin or there's a mental lapse or something or whatever, and when they, they sin and inside the Holy of Holies, bang, they die. That's what happens when you are so much into the Old Testament, you're more conscious of this than what Jesus accomplished now. Listen, today is a new and living way. Remember uh, Hebrews 10? I can show you all this, no, but I, I'm, sh I'm just sharing from the Spirit here. All right? You can study your Bible later. And who don't want to study? Can't he want to study? <coughs> who said that? The 
The Bible, say, the Bible says, having therefore boldness, the verse before that, where there's remission of sin, where there's forgiveness of sins, there's no more an offering for sin. And the Holy Spirit witness to us, our sins are no more. God remembers them no more. Amen. Having therefore, therefore is based on all these truths, therefore we have boldness to enter the holiest, all right? Listen, by the blood of Jesus, never by our works, in a new and living way. So now the holy of holies is a new and living way. In the past, it was an old and dying way. Okay? Number one is that uh, if, you go, if you go inside there without proper preparation and all that, you die because you have sinned. But today, when you enter in, listen carefully, listen to what I'm saying here. The light, God is light. If we walk in the light as He is in the light, and by the way, the walk down there in the light is telling us if we have our place in the light as He is in the light. Chapter 1. Amen? Because he's talking to people who are also not safe. So he says, if we walk in the light, amen, we're people in the light. It's not the same as, as saying that we walk completely in the light in terms of our behavior. He's talking about your position. If we are truly in the light, listen church, the light will only show how there's no more spot on you. How bright is that light? The, the Holy of Holies. I'm telling you, the Holy of Holies, the light, the Shekinah glory only shines on you to show the perfection of Jesus' work. Amen. To Him be all the glory and the praise. Amen. Amen. It is like, like uh, 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 you know, ladies, uh, gem, special precious stones, right? Rubies or sapphire. What do they do? They put it under the, this kind of light, right? What do you call it? Down light. They put it under this light. Why? Why? Because it brings out its beauty. So in other words, the more you come to God, the light of God shines on you. It brings out all the beauties and the perfections of what Jesus has accomplished for you. And you are perpetually in God's presence. Child of God, let me just tell you this. You are always in God's presence. All right? Now, I'm not talking about, about uh, uh, worshipping and, oh, I feel God's presence today as if God came today and then last week He, he changed His mind and, and you know, next week He might come halfway. And I, you know, we talk about it in terms of our experience. Usually, it's, it's, it's still in the carnal stage, you know, of wanting the experience and all that. But actually, we are, we are never an absentee worshipper. We are always in the Holy of Holies. Amen. Well, what about sin, Pastor Prince? All right? The best thing is this. When you realize you're in the Holy of Holies, always accepted, always loved, Forever accepted. Amen. Forever righteous in Christ. All sins, past, present, future, put away by the blood of Jesus that's there. Amen. When you realize that, you can judge your sin. But in the environment of love, in the family environment, in His presence, and that's a deeper way to judge your sin. You'll say, okay, Joseph Prince, you got this bad temper, okay? Right? I judged that. It's a bad temper. Don't, don't excuse yourself. It's a bad temper. It's not the person's fault. You've got a problem with bad temper. So Lord, work on, on, on me, Lord, in this area. Yes, Colossians 1.11. Strengthen, Lord. Strengthen me. By the way, it's a prayer. Right? Have you been praying that prayer? Have you been praying that prayer? What prayer, Pastor? Strengthen with all might according to His glorious power. We always think, strengthen with all might for powerful works. Amen. Miracles, signs, and wonders. But strengthen with all might according to His glorious power unto all perseverance and patience with joy. Amen. Have you noticed it's quite challenging, huh? That's why we need strengthening. Amen. So I, I pray, I pray that prayer. But I'm praying not as if God is so far away. I'm praying as if God is so near. So for you to even start praying and say, Father God, Father in heaven, I come to you in Jesus' name. Even saying, I come to you. Where were you? <laughs> it's going to change some of our prayers. You see, but watch this. You proceed from a false premise. No, I've not forgotten Genesis 26. All right? Child of God, relax. All right? Death will entice you. Amen? So even when we pray, Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. Where were you? Oh, I, I, I haven't come to God's presence. I. But pastor, the Bible says, let us therefore come boldly through. He's talking to Hebrews. And he's telling them, let us come boldly to the throne of grace that may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. But we are there at the Father's right hand. We are seated with Christ, right? If anything, we should be saying like this, Father. So when you say Father, like He's so close, you are actually living the truth. 
you are praying in the truth. And the Holy Spirit bears witness with it. That is praying in the name of Jesus. It's not this magical formula. I say in the name of Jesus, that now God must give me. Right? It is not that. Praying in the name of Jesus is praying like you are in the position of Jesus, in the person of the representative of Jesus. Um, when we're talking about his own vision, I think we'll even want to maybe just talk about it and help define it. Like what, Pastor Darren, like what is his own vision? When I think about his own vision, uh, I think sometimes people can be intimidated by how large it is because we're yeah. talking about a prophetic vision from God. Yeah. Right? It sounds like something really big and really massive. Yes. But, you know, today I just want to break it down, you know, for our digital care group and keep it really simple. And rather than think about what is God's vision, can we start first today? And you can do this simple activity by yourself with a journal, or ideally, like you can do this in a group. Get a piece of paper, divide it into half, into two columns. And in the first column, just write down what I see. Mm. Right, and discuss it in your own groups or just you know, write it in your own journals, what I see. So rather than think about what God sees and what is God's vision for you, begin with this simple activity of what you see. Mm. And, and just be honest and as specific as you can. Maybe you see, like looking back at the last six months or even looking back at the year 2020, did you see a lot of uh, anxiety? Did you see fear? that you see you know, concerns over your employment or a health condition, whatever it is, just whatever you see presently, just begin to write it down. And if you are with some people in a small group, like just if it's not too uh, personal, just mm -hmm. feel comfortable to, to share it and discuss what you see. Like uh, for the other column, the second column, write, write out what God sees. Wow. So for example, right on this column, if you said something like, I, I see like, uh, you know, my health deteriorating, you know, I have this anxiety about my health. Yeah. Then on the column where, you, where, where it says what God sees, just begin to pronounce and write something positive, something victorious, something, you know, powerful, like yeah. through the eyes of God. For example, see yourself by his stripes, I'm healed. See yourself yeah. like complete and whole. See yourself like, you know, in this year, partaking the Holy Communion as Pastor Prince has taught us like never before, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? What yeah. God sees, because yeah. to put it simply, Pastor Josh, I'm submitting this simple definition, the simplest yeah. definition that we can think about what his own vision is, yeah. is just yeah. seeing what God sees in my situation. Yes. Yes. I'll say it again. The simplest definition I can think of for receiving a Hazon vision is seeing what God sees in my situation. I like that because uh, actually um, it's a personal thing. Yes. And I think that that's what we want to talk about here, how it's it sounds big, it's intimidating at first maybe, and, and it has a Hebrew word in it, right? Hazon. Yeah. So yeah. it gets and really... It's a Hebrew word for vision. It just means vision. <laughs> it's a Hebrew word for vision. That's exactly mm -hmm. it. Vision from God. Right? Vision from God. Exactly. And I think that what you just said is good because it makes it personal. And, mm -hmm. you know, obviously we have a big God and he is like, big in the way he serves us and all of that, but he brings it down to our level and it makes it personal. And I feel like one of the things coming back to even the video that's linked to what you just said that pastor shared is the prayer from Ephesians one mm -hmm. where pastor, like, it seems like the vision revolves around prayer as well. Like you were just sharing, Hey, um, what do I see right now? And then from there, like, let's take it to him in prayer and then let's start to write down, even from his word, like what does God see in this situation? It's a personal thing and prayer revolves around a person, the person of Jesus. Yeah, and, and Josh, I just want to, you know, touch on this one point, which is yeah. there is this big discrepancy, Josh, between yeah. what we see and what God sees. Yeah. So this simple yeah. activity is just to help us see the disparity. Yeah, right? yeah. I leave this story and this scripture and Pastor Prince preached about this. You can look at this verse right now. It's from 2 Kings chapter uh -huh. 6, verse 16, right? And it talks about the prophet Elisha and this story where it feels like they are surrounded. Outwardly, what they see is they're surrounded by enemies all across. All Elisha's servant can see is they're surrounded by enemies. 
And, and Elijah says to his servant, do not fear for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. But his servant couldn't see. So what Elijah did was he prayed and says, Lord, I pray, open the eyes of this young man. Wow. And he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Wow. So there's a big discrepancy between what we see and what the Lord sees. So the prayer that Pastor Josh and I have for you all today for his own vision is that even as you're seeing challenges and adversity and difficulty, we pray like Elisha prayed for his servant, yeah. that the Lord will open your eyes and you will see that there is more with you, there is more supply, there is more grace, there is more anointing, there is more healing than there is sickness. There is more power than there is weakness. Yeah. So that, that's our prayer for you, to receive that his own vision. See that victory. Amen? We believe with you. Thank you for tuning in to Joseph Prince Ministries. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to receive all our latest videos. And join us this Sunday for Church on Grace Revolution Church Online.